Cover One crew, welcome back to the show. I am Chris Chaus. Hope everybody's doing great out there. I'm always good. But you know what? We got week number 12. Must add players. Pick them up now. And I mean, okay, it's a little thin, but there are still players that we need to put on our waiver wire or off the waiver wire, I should say, onto our rosters to help us with this playoff push. Three more weeks and we are going to the fantasy football playoffs. You got to love it. You're never out. If you still have a breathing chance, you have a chance. So follow me. Let's get some of these players on your roster to help fill the void. If you have lost, uh, you know, productivity or injuries, I got you covered. Let's go. So again, before we get started, bet us for all you betting fanatics like me on the point spreads on the betting. Just get on a bet us. It's good stuff. Use promo code cover 125% sign up bonus up to $2,500. Get you some money in your pockets. You got to love it. Christmas is coming. You guys need some more money. I'm telling you, I'll bet us. Just don't lose it all. I'm telling you, it's not a good thing. But week number 12, waiver wire running backs. This is going to be difficult, but we got some good fortune based on the default Melvin Gordon, he's been released from the Denver Broncos, and Chase Edmonds has been put into the medical room for a few weeks with a high ankle sprain. What does that mean for y'all? Yes, it's a crappy offense. I completely understand, but volume is key. Lat Murray, he's been finding the end zone. He is the number one waiver wire running back at this point. He will get volume. Path to targets and path to volume is your key. You just uh, you know scored gold right now if you have him on your roster, but he's only owned in 28.4% uh, of leagues at this point. 63 points. He is the goal line back already for the past few weeks in Denver. Now he's going to take uh, all, basically all the touches right now until Chase Edmonds come, comes back from injury. So this could actually help you in a very big way. Get to the playoffs with a big playoff push. Rashad White as well. He's on the uh, waiver wire still under 50%, 47.3. And I mean, they were on the bye week, so some people couldn't spare the room or they're just sleeping on the services. You still have an opportunity to gain this man onto your roster, and it's a good thing. They will likely start giving him more more carries as the season goes on. Rashad White is a definite uh, pickup uh, waiver wire addition this week. James Cook, he finds the way on. And I mean, he's on a, I, I think it's a bench stash right now. But this is the way things are going. I wanted to see the Bills, you know, ramp up their run game. Yes, it's a three-headed monster between Singletary Cook and now Naheem Hines. But Cook has the speed. Once he starts finding his way into the end zone, he's going to be very difficult for the Bills to take off in those plays. So I'm telling y'all, the, they want to limit Josh Allen a little bit so that he's not playing Superman every single week. This this is, I, I was so happy to see the Bills run the ball this past week against the Browns. Hopefully that continues to, this trend versus these teams. James Cook is likely going to be a big part of that as well. I love it. First time you saw James Cook smiling, that's a big uh, sign of things to come. No kidding. Sam G. P. Ryan, he's on the waiver. But this is, okay, this is a cautionary tale because of Joe Mixon's concussion. I don't know how much you can trust it. It is very scary if Mixon does pass concussion protocol and you put in some fab dollars on a P. Ryan just because he scored three three touchdowns, three tutties this past week. So if you have the room, my advice is if you have the room only, only don't blow the fab either. But I mean, we're at the end of it as it is anyway. So I mean, he would be a bench stash. He could likely be a pickup and cut, especially if Mixon does come back from that protocol and is going to suit up on Sunday. So definitely watch out for that one. There could be other options like a Jarek McKinnon. Now without uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, he's got a high ankle sprain four to six weeks gone. And I know we got Isaiah Pacheco. He's taking majority of the touches right now, but McKinnon's going to still hold some PPR upside uh, in this Kansas City offense that does spread the ball around. It's going to be very high volatile, but McKinnon is definitely on the watch. So is uh, Kyron Williams and uh, Cam Akers. They are on the watch list right now. I'm not picking them up at this point. You should have better options if you are fighting for a playoff spot, but they both have some viable uh, you know, potential, I want to say. Cam did get a lot more carries this past week, but this Rams offense is in such disarray. The only time you're going to be banking on anything proper is going to be likely garbage time as Matthew Stafford entered concussion protocol yet again. 
again, so they're going to have to lean on the check downs to these running backs, and you got to think that Kyron Williams is going to start seeing his role increase so they can realize what they have in his services. Madison, Alexander Madison, get this man on your bench. Dalvin Cook owners, handcuff time. You don't want to you know, see Dalvin go down only if you have the room. Don't drop anybody that you utilize on a weekly basis. If you have the room, definitely get him on the handcuff. On the watch list is Tristan Ebner and then uh, K uh, Cantony Ingram. I, I butchered his first name. I apologize, sir. That is not okay. But Ingram from the Arizona Cardinals, uh, definitely on the watch list at this point, just like a Tristan Ebner. The quarterback time, Ryan Tannehill finds his way back to at least – potential viability I mean he's he looked good last week he was firing the ball all over the place velocity looked good the ankle looked good Traylon Burks came back he was fine in Austin Hooper I liked what I saw man but that's this offense in Tennessee predicated on the ground game with King Henry and then you know hooking it up with the play action pass this is where Tannehill does uh, you know succeed a lot and he will give you good points still matchup play quarterback but he is definitely one to uh, look at in matchup play now that he is back and healthy Deshaun Watson 42 percent ownership Right now, he's going to be playing, suiting up very, very soon. And, okay, he's going to probably take a week or two to shake the rust. But like I said last week, he's going to be one of these guys that potentially could give you top-end numbers at the quarterback position. So if you have been streaming quarterbacks or if you've lost one to injuries, uh, Deshaun Watson's definitely one you could blow all your fab on because he could be one of these guys that could take you deep into the fantasy playoffs. Marcus Mariota stays on the on the uh, waiver wire edition list because, I mean, it's Mariota. He's able to run and score touchdowns. Yes, they lost Kyle Pitts this might be a benefit to Mariota because now he doesn't feel forced to feed a Kyle Pitts now it's gonna be Drake London time and Zacchaeus always making plays and he's taking off running with the ball so they're always competitive they're always competing and Mariota is gonna do that the turnovers are the problem the lack of uh, top end productivity is a concern but you can utilize Mariota in matchup play as well Kenny Pickett's showing some goodness and he's finding that chemistry and that connection with a George Pickens you can almost start to believe in a Kenny Pickett in fact fantasy productivity but again it's going to be match of play for me Jared Goff is on the list but I don't really care for it this week versus the Bills defense which should test them quite a bit but Jared Goff uh, you know moving forward for the playoff push it potentially has streaming viability Andy Dalton Matt Ryan Tyler Henneke do round out the list so pick your poison on match of play right now Matt Ryan should see better days he was playing the Eagles man they got a damn good front seven and Tyler Henneke I mean he's doing more than enough to win football games just the under 10 points does concern me at this point so I mean he will have better days where it's 15 to 20 but I mean uh, I definitely again matchup play for these streaming quarterbacks as for wide receivers we do got some meat and potatoes on this group it is Traylon Burks and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and I get it he's been injured now he comes back he showcases what he's able to do he was the replacement for an AJ Brown this is why they drafted the man they had the, the sight set on this not paying AJ Brown and getting a guy like Traylon Burks who could mirror very similar skill sets which he does possess he's very fast he is a grown man too and he's got hands for days so I mean you know what Traylon Burks to me definitely needs to be on your roster especially with how Tannehill showed that he could uh, you know at least support it to high end uh, you know uh, uh, statistical achievement so I do like that for a Traylon Burks 21.4% ownership he should be on majority of your waivers go and grab yourself a Traylon Burks Darius Slayton does uh, you know he's in my number two right now this week because of the fact it's by default volume volume path to volume path to targets I'm going to say it again just like a lap Murray it is a Darius Slayton uh, injuries to the wide receiver room now Darius Slayton should be the number one target for a Daniel Jones Kenny Galladay is just pooping the bed every single week does nothing they're probably going to institute Richie James once again who has done very well also but I do like me a Darius Slayton he's proven in the past that he can be a big play uh, target big play playmaker I like Darius Slayton 35.8 percent he's almost got you 70 points should see a majority of the target share moving forward there is nobody else to, to get to give it to in this offense outside of Richie James and Saquon Barkley so Darius Slayton could be a very good pop in play every single week uh, Jarvis Landry makes his way back he looks like he's recovered from his injury PPR upside baby that's what I told you guys always if he's healthy he's on your roster because of that PPR upside Andy Dalton will find him downfield he scored a touchdown this past week and now with Chris Olave stretching the field being the number one basically I gotta say Chris Olave is my guy so I'm, I'm saying he's the number one target in New Orleans but Jarvis Landry definitely has turned my head once again to be trusted as a PPR guy the uh, uh, Peoples Jones man I'm stumbling with these names today not looking, I shouldn't have had that drink before I started this. But anyway, Donovan Peoples-Jones, 
And again, his value is increasing. Jacoby Brissett is finding him with greater uh, target share. Amari Cooper is pulling all the coverage to his side. Now with Deshaun Watson coming back, I feel like I can finally start to trust a DPJ. Donovan Peoples-Jones, he should be on your roster. Paris Campbell again. It's, it's a difficult one for me. I want to look always for better options than a Paris Campbell, but I do believe he does have flex appeal. So it is pick your poison per week given on matchups for a Paris Campbell, then I will trust him. Jahan Dotson has not really come back to, you know, the good spot where we had seen him early on in the year, but the injury took him back. Now he got a quarterback change, different mentality, different scheme under with a Heineke. So Dotson will have his days. So right now he's a watch player for me. As Demarcus Robinson from the Baltimore Ravens, though, he is 2.3% ownership. He is one we got to look at because Devin Duvernay is taking up all the coverage, uh, number one DBs. You got Mark Andrews taking up coverage they're forgetting about a Brian Robinson and he's open down the field all the time Lamar Jackson just needs to be a little bit more consistent but I do believe that he should be owned on your roster at this point we can we I want to see a couple more games of consistency before I say you could trust him in a start sit situation but Robinson definitely needs to be on your roster Julio Jones coming off the bye week he should be healthy at least to score you touchdowns get you some points from a Tom Brady but it is going to be intermittent between a uh, Mike Evans and a Chris Godwin he's going to get the scraps that are left over so I mean you gotta uh, understand what you're getting with the Julio Jones he could also get injured at any given moment Sky Moore does grace the list he does have some upside but it is again very difficult to trust because the Chiefs do spread the ball around quite a bit now that Kadarius Tony again has injured his hamstring this guy's uh, hammies are made of bubble gum I just don't understand but Sky Moore I mean he uh, definitely watch list right now I know some people are going to be rushing to the wire to grab his services just a watch player for me at this point Odell Beckham and Jamison Williams both on the wire 36.3 for Beckham, 19.1 for Jamison Williams. Jamison's starting to ramp up his uh, uh, practice, so he's starting to run. He's going to be playing likely week 13, I want to believe. So can we trust him? I, it's a tough one, but the skill set does say that we should at least take a chance, and that's why I'm saying get him on your bench and stash him right now because depending on how these Detroit lie, they're playing good. Detroit's playing good. Uh, they got some fight in them. And you put a, a true speed wide receiver like a Jamison Williams on this field. They want to see what they got out of this draft pick. They're going to utilize him at least four to six times per game, especially in the deep shots, just to see if he's going to work out. But I'm telling you, Jameson Williams definitely needs to be owned, as does Odell Beckham Jr. We'll see where he goes. It's, it's a potentially between Dallas, the Giants, and the Buffalo Bills for OBJ. So we'll see. Both those individuals need to be on your roster at this point. For tight ends to finish it off, we got Juwan Johnson from the New Orleans Saints. He's been picking up steam. We all thought it was going to be Taysom Hill. Johnson was like, get out of my way. I'm the real tight end. And he's proven it, man. 80.4 points. He's just been climbing up the boards. I've been sleeping on him a little too much. I should have suggested his services a couple weeks ago. Did not my fault. I'll own that one. But Johnson, if he's still there, 24.4%. He is making waves. And he can likely be trusted with tight ends that are so, you know, difficult to play every single week. You get basically 3.5 to 10 points and you're like, yes, that's a boom, even though it sucks all around because tight ends just don't get used a lot in the NFL anymore outside of the top dogs. Mike Gusecki does have a good matchup this week. I do believe so. 42.8% 40, ownership. You could do a lot worse. The only problem is his floor is very low. So if you find other options, I do recommend that. But Mike Gusecki can find the end zone and this Miami Dolphins offense is putting up 30 points a week so he's gonna at least get some of that sprinkle of target share Mike Gusecki can be trusted I do believe in matchup play Evan Ingram and Foster Moreau do grace the list of next available tight ends that I would be searching for Ingram's been pretty steady 61 points it's just the touchdown productivity has not been there that's what's been crippling us so he gets the five six points if he found the end zone it would be 14 and you're happy it just hasn't been happening near enough maybe after the bye week they got some rest coach Doug Peterson you know gets them a little bit more uh, schooled up in the system and maybe they start feeding Ingram just a little bit more but we will see about that Foster Moreau in this uh, Vegas Raiders I mean they're a hot mess right now and I mean Denver I don't understand what happened how do you not take away Devontae Adams I, I expected Foster Moreau to have a very big day but he will continue this over the next few weeks because there is no supportive cast outside of a Hollins and a Moreau now that all the other guys are on the injured reserve so Moreau is definitely one you can play in matchup play as well Kate Otten I'm 
I'm a big fan. Tom Brady is just finding him on the regular. His floor definitely is about six to uh, six and a half points in, in full PPR, half PPR. You can definitely use that as a tight end because, like I said, the average for tight end scoring is extremely low outside of Kelsey and Andrews. So you got to figure out which one you're going to play on a weekly basis. Otten does have some very safe floor, but his high end ceiling is not to be desired. Austin Hooper's back. This is what I was hoping for the entire season. We all know that Austin Hooper is one of the best uh, blocking tight ends in the NFL. That's why he stays on the line quite a bit. But I figured with the play action pass, he was going to be a monumental mismatch in the red zone at least. Has not come to fruition. He did score two touchdowns this past week, so maybe it's a sign of things to come. Austin Hooper definitely on the watch. We got Logan Thomas. He comes back to some good graces as well. I don't think it's going to be consistent because of all the wide receivers they do have in Washington. He is also on the watch list. Want to see a couple more. And McBride, the rookie from Arizona, now that Zach Ertz is gone. Looked like they, on Monday Night Football, they gave him a lot more of the, uh, the snap count, but they did sprinkle in some Max Williams as well. So this is something to keep your eye on also. McBride could turn into that, you know, uh, poor man's at this point, Zach Ertz in this offense with a Kyler Murray. I do like his game. He's big, he's physical, and he's fast, and he can catch the ball. He's got very good hands. So McBride is one you definitely got to remember. Put on that, put that star, man. Click the star. It's on the watch, and you'll see Trey McBride because I, I do believe as this year continues, he's going to have an impact for this Cardinals offense. So there you have it. That is week number 12, Waiver Wire. This is Thanksgiving week. You got to love it. Three games on Thanksgiving Thursday. I'm so pumped. I love that so much. It's a full day of football in the middle of the week. How can you not love it? Anyway, hope you guys get all the players you put in. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments. I'll definitely get back to you. But nevertheless, as always, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Like I said, jump in those comments, and we'll see you next time. I am out.